Hi everyone, my name's Josh, welcome back to another video. So today we're gonna to have a talk about and have a spray with the very popular Wagner Finish Control 3500 XVLP units. When you order a Finish Control 3500 from us, this is exactly what you'll receive here. So we have the main unit itself, and we also give you this free fine spray attachment, which is for your more intricate areas, but I'll go into a little bit more detail on that later. Uh, what's also handy with these units is we also have it available in 110 volt or 240, so suitable for both domestic and site work. So let's crack them open and see exactly what you get. Both units are pretty much the same, so 110 volt comes with a 110 volt plug, 240 with a 240 volt. So for this video, I'm going to open up the 240 volt. Get that out of the way. As you can see, this is a really well put together kit and comes with everything you're going to need to start spraying. So we've got this really nicely designed carry case, which has space for our turbine unit itself, two of our spray attachment kits and all the accessories you're likely to need. You also get the carry strap, which you can use for the case itself or the turbine unit. So that just goes over your shoulder. You also get a 30 and a 50 mesh filter so you can switch between the fine and the standard spray. You also get three of the air input filters and three disposable funnels for filling the cups. Wagner offer a massive five year warranty with the turbine unit itself, which comprises of a three year standard warranty plus another two years after registering with them directly. So I'll put a link in the description below so you know where you need to register. I think with a five year warranty, it's clear Wagner have no doubts about the reliability of the XVLP unit. The only things that aren't covered by the warranty are the front spray attachments. So these are considered to be a wearing part and you could invalidate your warranty if there is paint found inside the turbine unit itself. So that tells us that either the filter hasn't been changed or if the unit has been tilted back too far and paint has backtracked from the pot. Wagner say that you shouldn't really be using this unit at more than a 45 degree angle, which to be honest is a bit of an unnatural spraying position, but it's definitely worth knowing. XVLP is a similar concept to HVLP, but with that little bit more oomph behind it. So HVLP stands for high volume, low pressure. This refers to the high volume of air, but at a low pressure. So we aren't creating as much overspray as we would with an airless system. XVLP stands for extra volume, low pressure. So we're still operating at well below 10 PSI, but with a little bit more air volume to atomize our material a little bit more, which gives us a really nice finish and very minimal overspray and paint wastage. If you haven't seen one of these units before, they're quite unique in their design. Usually with HVLP units, we have a turbine unit which produces our air supply remotely positioned elsewhere and connected to your gun with an air hose. The 3500 is completely different in the way that the turbine unit itself is built directly into the back of the gun. So this means no air hose and no heavy turbine box to carry around. The downside is that the gun is slightly heavier and slightly bulkier than a conventional HVLP gun, but at 2.3 kilos, it's really not too bad. Another big difference between XVLP and conventional HVLP guns is to change the needle nozzle size with an HVLP gun, you have to take the front air cap off, remove the needles and nozzles, replace it with the size you want and put it back together again. Whereas with XVLP, all we have to do is flick this little catch down, twist it off, swap it for whatever one you want, line it back up, slot it back on, and you're ready to go again. When you buy this 3500, you get the standard spray attachment, which has the yellow retaining ring. So this has a 4.1 mil slot shaped nozzle, which is suitable for mainly standard to high viscosity materials. As I said earlier, when you buy this unit from us, we also give you this fine spray attachment, which has the brown retaining ring and a 1.8 mil needle nozzle size. So this is the smallest setup you can buy for the 3500. And I'd suggest using this for your fine finish jobs with lower viscosity materials. So like lacquers, stains, varnishes. There is also a third front end with a white retaining ring that's called the wall spray attachment. So this uses the same 4.1 mil slot nozzle that you would get with the standard front end. You're gonna be using the wall spray attachment for slightly larger jobs using emulsion and latex paints. All of the front end spray attachments are fine with both water and solvent based paints. And both the standard and the fine spray use the same one liter stainless cup, whereas the wall spray attachment uses a 1.4 liter stainless cup. Because the nozzles and attachments are removable, they're really easy to keep clean and tidy, and also super easy to switch between colors quickly. With all the spray attachments, you have this nice, easy, and robust fan control, so you can adjust the size of your spray pattern really quickly whilst you're spraying. You also can quickly switch between vertical and horizontal fan patterns by simply turning the air cap. 
And we also have this control on the back of the gun, which allows us to adjust the amount of material that comes out the front. Lastly, we have one more control, which is on the back of the turbine itself. So this is adjusting the air we have going to the air cap to atomize our paint. So we've got loads of adjustment to get the finish we want. 3500 also has a really clever two-stage trigger. So first pull of the trigger here, gets our turbine spinning and starts the air moving. Then pull the trigger completely and that then releases our material and allows us to start spraying. Now let's head over to the spray booth and I'll give you a run through of what this thing can do. Welcome to the spray booth. So we've got the Wagner XVLP here, so we'll give it a quick demo just to see what it can do. So we've got a Caparol primer in there, thin to about 15%. So I've already had a play around with it and that's about the sweet spot where you want to be. With HVLP, you are always going to need to thin it down slightly. So we'll give it a quick spray and see how we get on. For this demo, I'm going to be using the fine spray attachment, which has our 1.8 mil fluid setup. Uh, as I said earlier, this gun has a two stage trigger pull. So the first stage of the trigger starts the turbine and starts the flow of air. Then the second stage, when we depress the trigger fully, we start the flow of material. So it's really important that when you're spraying, you hold the trigger just for a second or two on the first stage to start the turbine and get the air up to speed before releasing the material. If you don't do that, you can find that you get spitting to start with. At the moment, I've got everything set on its lowest setting, so I'm going to slowly adjust it and increase everything so we can find the setting that's right for this material with this attachment. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I've actually got it on 12 on the back here on the airflow, and then I've got it on about 10 and a half here at the fluid control, and that seems to give us decent speed, decent atomization, and I'm quite happy with that. So now we've got it set up where it needs to be, I can show you how easy it is to switch between vertical and horizontal. So at the moment we've got a vertical pattern and switch to horizontal, as simple as that. So I'll show you that in action. We've also got this fan control on the front of the gun here, so we can switch between a wide and narrow fan pattern. So at the moment I've been spraying with the wider fan pattern, so I'll switch between the two and show you the difference. So I'll start off with wide and then go back to narrow. So as you can see, much a huge difference in the size of the fan pattern itself, so obviously much narrower down here. But what you'll also notice is the paint is slightly thicker on this lower section than it is on the wider top section. So that's because we've got the same amount of material coming out, but we're spreading it over a smaller area. So if you wanted to compensate for that, if you're going to a narrow fan pattern, just dial down the amount of fluid you get just a little bit, or increase it if you're going slightly wider. You'll notice that I hold the trigger at its first stage just for a second or two before depressing it fully and allowing the paint to come through. The idea of that is to get the turbine up to full speed and allow a decent airflow through the gun so that when we pull the material up and release the material, we've got a decent airflow that it can go into which will atomize the paint for us. If I go to the second stage straight away and just pull it before the turbine is up to speed, you'll notice that in your paint finish, you'll get a splatter to start with because there isn't enough air to atomize our paint. So what I'll do is I'll just pull the trigger straight away and then continue spraying normally. And you'll notice that we get a splat to start with. And then what I'll do is let the turbine get up to speed, then pull the trigger completely so you can see the difference. So 
So as you can see, when I did it properly with the just holding it on the first stage for a second, nice finish all the way through, nice and consistent. And then when I went straight and pulled the trigger straight away, you can see horrible splatters to start with, and then it eventually evened out and looks the same as it does down here. Now I've got the gun set up exactly as I'd like it. I've got the air control at 12 and the fluid control at 10 and a half, and I've got it on the wide fan pattern. That's gonna be best for something like this door behind me. So I'll give it a quick spray and we can see how it gets on. As you can see, spraying with a XVLP or HVLP unit is always going to be a bit slower than spraying with an airless unit, but there are a lot of benefits in that it's a lot less overspray, a lot less masking up, a lot less paint wastage, a lot less paint to actually start it up and get going, and quicker to clean out, quicker to change colours if you need to, and the finish is still excellent. Okay, so next up we've got one of these stair spindles, so we'll give that a try. I've switched to the narrower fan pattern. I've dialed down my fluid and my air a little bit, just so we can sort of control it a little bit more and so that the paint's not going on quite as quick. So let's give it a go and see how we get on. As you can see, that's a really quick way to be spraying your stair spindles. So very little overspray, very little paint wastage, especially compared to an airless. And to be honest with you, I think you're doing it just as fast because 
With an airless unit, there's only so narrow a fan pattern you can go, and there's only so fast you can move. For this demonstration, I've been using the fine spray attachment. What I'll do now is I'll use the standard spray attachment as well, so you can see the difference between the two. So I'll use the exact same cap roll paint, thin to the same level, and keep everything the same in terms of power-wise, so you can see the difference in the speed of application. So that's with exactly the same settings. So as you can see, we've got a much wider fan pattern, a lot more paint going on with the standard spray attachment compared to the fine. Personally, I prefer the fine for most jobs because I think you've got a lot more control with it. If I wanted to spray something with this sort of size of fan pattern, I'd be using my airless unit. But if you have got a larger area to do and you don't want as much overspray as you get with airless, then I do think the standard could be useful. Now we spray the side of the door with a fine spray attachment. I wanted to give you a quick comparison so you can see what it would be like with a standard spray. So this is for much larger areas. So we are gonna be able to spray this door nice and it will look good, but it's not gonna be quite as fine finish and we're not gonna have quite as much control and we're probably gonna get a bit more overspray. So the standard spray attachment with the yellow retaining ring has done a really good job on that door. I'm happy with the finish we've got. But for me, if I was choosing between the fine spray and the standard, if I was doing a door, I'm gonna want it as fine finish as I can get, and I'm willing to spend a little bit more time and with that, you're gonna get a bit less overspray and a bit less paint wastage. So that's about it on the Wagner Finish Control 3500 XVLP. It's perfect for smaller projects, repairs and touch-ups where a controlled fine finish is required. You can also use this in confined areas where low overspray is important and you can also keep your projects really efficient because you only need a small amount of paint to get spraying. I hope this video has been useful and I'll put a link in the description below to the 3500 so if you wanted to find out any more information you can check it out there. If you've liked the video and found it helpful then please hit the thumbs up icon and if you wanted to find out more and get access to exclusive offers then please subscribe to the channel and also hit the notification bell so you get a little notification when we upload a new video. That way you aren't going to miss out on any new offers or content. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.